Well, let me say it's awesome to be here with you guys. Um, brings back a lot of memories. Um, gosh, I would say it's uh, 39 years ago now. I was in my last spring game here, uh, sitting in those same chairs, and wouldn't wouldn't trade my career for anything in the world. But had a chance this weekend to come back and, and give back a little bit, and we did. Um, we have what we call uncommon weekend. We uh, recognize someone in the sports world who's done a great job on the field, but off the field as well. So this year we honored Thomas Davis, linebacker from the Carolina Panthers, who overcame three ACL tears in the same knee and a broken arm to play in the Super Bowl. Uh, but not only did Thomas do that and lead his team to, to Super Bowl 50, but also did some tremendous things off the field in the Charlotte area, giving back to the community and representing the Lord. So uh, we honored Thomas. We had about 3,500 men at Grace Church this morning who got to hear him talk about his love for the Lord and why he not only plays the game, but why he does the things that, that he does in, in Charlotte. So it was awesome. Luke asked me if I could speak to you guys today. And uh, I said, absolutely. I, I would love to, to just give you a word of encouragement uh, because the university is so special to me. It's where my career started and uh, some lessons that I learned that I, I'll never ever forget. That's good. So Tony played football here, as you know. Does anyone know that he also played basketball for a year, his freshman year? Anyone take a guess what year that was? Tony was a freshman. Close. 73, 1973, freshman year, came from Michigan to the University of Minnesota. So talk to us a little bit about your freshman year. What were some challenges you faced your first couple years on campus? You know, I, I had uh, just, just came here. I was so excited about coming and being part of this. I uh, wanted to build the team. At that time, it was kind of referred to as the big two and the little eight. Michigan and Ohio State, they were winning every year and everybody else was trying to catch them. And uh, my coach, Cal Stahl, talked about how we were going to do it. If we were going to do it, he said it was going to take some uncommon men, some, some people who weren't satisfied with just being average, just being okay, uh, but were going to be willing to go the extra mile to work a little bit harder to do the things that other people wouldn't do to not only make our team better, but make the university a better place to be. And he challenged us that way, and I was excited about that. But there were some other challenges. Um, I had to make some decisions, as you guys know. You get away from high school, uh, you get into a college environment, and you choose how you're gonna live. You choose what's important to you, who you're gonna hang around with, what you're gonna do. And uh, I, I saw some things where I could, could go in a number of different directions. Um, and I could hang with the wrong crowd or I could hang with the right crowd. I could do some things that my parents wouldn't be proud of, that I wouldn't be proud of if it came out, uh, or I could do things the right way. And that was probably the biggest part of, of my college career, was learning how to make those decisions and be accountable for them. And step up and be a man and, and either either do the right things or do the wrong things and I didn't always do the right thing but I, I think I learned from it and I grew from it and it was important to me. I was sharing with the basketball team the best advice that I got on my first day on campus was from a guy named Jim Brewer. He was an All-American basketball player. He had just come back from the Olympics. He was going to the Cleveland Cavaliers, the second player picked in the draft. And he told me, he welcomed me to the university, he said, make sure you take advantage of everything the university has to offer. That if you only become better in your sport, you're cheating yourself. To make sure you go to class, make sure you get your degree. If you don't leave with a degree, you're cheating yourself. And then he talked about growing a lot of different ways in, in college. And uh, that was the challenge he gave me, to grow athletically, to grow academically, grow socially, get to know people, but grow spiritually as well. And, and I say that was the one point, if I had to do anything different in my college career, it would be that. I didn't grow spiritually as much as I could have. 
I, I was a, a Williams Scholar and I took care of business in the classroom. I played as, as hard as I could play. I worked as hard as I could, just, just like you do on the field. Uh, I think I got the most out of my football career that I could. I grew socially, I made friends. I still have friendships that, that I have from 40 years ago. But spiritually, I kind of put that behind me and it wasn't the right thing to do because God's involved in it all the time. And I tried to separate that when I was in college. And I didn't learn that lesson until I got to the NFL. When I went to the Steelers, I saw a group of guys who invited me to chapel, they invited me to Bible study, they talked about reading their Bible, how to live, making decisions that would honor the Lord. And I didn't really start growing as a Christian until I was 21 years old. And if I had to do anything over in my college career, it would be that. It would be making sure that I grew spiritually as well as those other areas. Good. Uh, talk a little bit about your experience coaching in the NFL. Obviously coached a lot of elite players, some of, some of them <coughs> now in the Hall of Fame. What were some of the players that really were mentally and physically tough? Who were they and what, what characteristics do they have? You know, people ask you all the time, what, what's the key to being great? What's the key to making it in the NFL? And it, certainly there's, there's a certain amount of talent, uh, but it really is more than that. It's desire, it's determination, it's being a good teammate, it's uh, being willing to sacrifice, all of those things. Um, we had some outstanding players when I got to Tampa. I, I got the job and we had great individuals, but we had never put that team together. Um, we had Warren Sapp and Derek Brooks and John Lynch and Trent Delper and, and some tremendous offensive linemen. But it, it was not a unified team. And my second year, we got a young man named Warwick Dunn drafted him in the first round from Florida State. He came to us and he solidified the team. It worked. Um, you, some of you are probably too young to know the story. He grew up in a single parent home and his mother was a security guard at a bank. And when he was a senior in high school, she got killed in a robbery. So he became, instead of the oldest son, all of a sudden he became everything father, mother, he had three younger siblings. So he comes to us and he wins the Offensive Rookie of the Year while he's taking these three kids through high school. And it was the most amazing thing that I've ever seen, but he brought a focus to us because he was concerned about working hard, being the best that he could be and winning. And he put us together as a team. And it was, it was special. I got to, to Indianapolis and Peyton Manning was the guy who was that glue, who was just willing to not only work hard for himself, but to do everything he could to help his teammates be better. And that's what makes a special team. It's talent to a certain extent, but it's willing to sacrifice and willing to help each other be better. And building that togetherness that, hey, we're not gonna let anything separate us. We're gonna have one goal in mind, everybody's going to work towards that and when you have that that's when you get the makings of the championship team a lot of people know about the super bowl in 2007 hall of fame inductee this summer but you've also faced some significant adversity both as a coach and as a man in your family talk about that how how would someone push through and face adversity and even overcome adversity I think really, uh, when I talk about my Christian faith and, and what's important to me in life, that's, that's really the bottom line, that you have to have faith that God is looking out for you. And that doesn't mean everything is gonna be perfect. Um, I got what I thought was the perfect head coaching job in, in Tampa, coaching the Buccaneers, we're winning, going to playoffs, and uh, we lost a couple of years in a row in the playoffs and I got fired. And that was disappointing because I knew we were close. We we're very close to being a Super Bowl team and didn't get to finish it out. And you feel like, boy, I, I failed at this. It, it didn't come through the way I wanted it to. But I had to believe that, that God had something else in, in store. Uh, we go to Indianapolis and 
we build that and it's going and we're close and we fall short a couple times. 2005 season, we win our first 13 games. We're rolling, we've got the best team that I've ever had. Uh, we didn't even have a game that was within a touchdown in those first 13 games, dominating everything. My son died in, right after Thanksgiving and things weren't quite the same and we didn't win that year. And it was a disappointment, not that we didn't win, but that I lost an 18 year old son. Next year we win the Super Bowl and everybody thinks, gosh, well that, that's gotta be great, that's the pinnacle, that, that's everything. But to me, being able to trust God and put God first, whether it's being in the playoffs, losing a son, getting fired, winning the Super Bowl, realizing that it's all the same and that my job is to honor the Lord no matter what. Um, I, I think that's what I, I've learned from my athletic career. Good. So last question, we talked about it with the basketball team. If any of you have seen Tony autograph a football or a picture, you'll notice he signs his name and then he puts something a little bit significant to him right below his name. So talk about what that is and, and why you choose to put that on an autograph. Yeah, I, I was telling the basketball team when you, uh, when you sign for people, they always want you to write something a little special, something that's gonna make make a difference and when we won the Super Bowl in 2006 people have always asked me well put that down Super Bowl 41 champs and last year uh, in February I got selected to be in the NFL Hall of Fame so people now say put that on there Hall of Fame 16 I want that that on there but I always write something uh, that's more important to me that's more meaningful to me and it's a Bible verse, it's Matthew 16, 26. So a lot of times if you see my signature, you'll see that under there, Matthew 16, 26. And that verse says, what would it profit a man to gain the whole world but forfeit his soul? And unfortunately, 31 years in the NFL, I, I saw that. Yeah, I saw people who were at the highest level, who won Super Bowl rings, who had big contracts, who went to Pro Bowls, who got elected to the Hall of Fame, but their life was a wreck, basically, inside. And when they got finished with the game, they, they didn't have great feelings, they had bad feelings. And that's because they allowed themselves to gain the whole world, what the world would see as important, but they didn't have it together spiritually. They didn't have a relationship with God. And at the end of the day, that's what's important because there's gonna be a time when people aren't gonna remember who won <coughs> the Super Bowl. They aren't gonna remember who's in the Hall of Fame. They're not gonna remember you for that. But did I have my relationship with God right? Did I, was I a person who sacrificed to help other people? Was I a person who tried to make other people's lives better? And to me, that, that's the important thing. That's the thing that's gonna last when it's all said and done. Um, there's, there's people, I, I played, I had a great four years here. Uh, loved every minute, uh, but you walk outside now for this game that you're gonna play in the spring, there'll be people that know your name that don't know my name. And there's kids who didn't grow up watching me play, they're watching you play. But all this, this comes and goes, as great as it is, and enjoy every minute of it. Enjoy your college career, uh, but it doesn't last forever. There's a time when you, you won't be putting on the maroon and gold anymore. There's a time you'll be finished with school. Uh, so it, it's, it's the lessons we learn, and it's what we have inside and where we are spiritually that, that matters. So that's my reason for coming today, to encourage you. I'm proud of you, I always watch you. I want us to do well. I'm excited for what you can accomplish this year, but I want to see you grow as people too, as men, as young men. That's more important to me. Tony, we appreciate your time. Thank Give you it up for Tony. Dunn.